Hello there viewers, Guy with the Camera 23 and welcome to part 4 of 2014, A Kubrick Odyssey. Now in this part I'm going to be focusing on Kubrick's 1955 feature film, Killer's Kiss. Now the way I'm going to be watching this is on the, uh, the Killing Criterion Collection Blu-ray, which is included as a special feature. Now directed by, co-produced by, story by, edited by and photographed by Stanley Kubrick, it tells the story of a young boxer who becomes involved with the, in the life of a woman who lives across from him and they are forced to kind of go on the run from this man who is, is kind of obsessed with the woman. And it's basically this, this kind of, this chase and kind of mistake, this case, kind of case of my mistaken identity and this, 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 this basically this, um, this kind of pursuit of this man against these two people who kind of go on the run. And it's an interesting film, it's, but it's far from Kubrick's best film. I mean, most of his early films are kind of like, a, like Fear and Desire, are kind of like a little kind of Easter egg, if you will, kind of like a, a time capsule from the past. I mean, it, the, I mean, Kubrick's style is evident in this film. There's a lot of kind of auto, like kind of um, deep focusing, lots of kind of close-up shots. This, this amazing shot of this, well, this is, um, kind of the, of this alleyway this this guy kind of like runs it's like a static shot then you just kind of see a guy run run kind of towards a camera and then it kind of it kind of does it at the, at the other end of the of the tunnel I'm not describing it very well of the, uh, the kind of the tunnel and you kind of see the, the guy kind of again static shot just kind of running through the other end which is a really really cool shot like I say it's it's, a, it's clearly a Kubrick film I mean for, even from like apart from the fact that it says directed by Stanley Kubrick um, it's very evident this is uh, his film and the way he made this film was, um, again, like Fear and Desire, he got money from his um, his uh, pharmacist uncle, uh, I think about $40,000, to uh, to make the film. Kubrick began to shoot this film uh, like like a usual film, with kind of uh, sound recorded on, on location, but because of, I think it was uh, an intrusion of a, of a boom mic, kind of interrupted his lighting scheme. <laughs> it's an incredible story, this. Interrupted his, his, his lighting scheme. Uh, so he fired his sound man, and uh, kind of uh, did it like uh, Fear and Desire and kind of did it, uh, re-recorded all the audio in the studio. I mean, it takes it takes balls of a direct to, to fire a guy just because, just he just he wants he always wants to get the best out of the film and to kind of fire a guy just because, uh, I mean because it interrupts his lighting scheme. It's just he will. There is nothing he won't kind of get through to get what gets what he to get what he wants. And firing a sound guy, like I say, it's got to be a ballsy thing to do for uh, more or less up and coming director. You know, it's kind of his his first kind of actual feature film that's kind of more than an hour. I mean, Fear and Desire was kind of like an hour and one minute. This is like an hour and seven minutes. So again, it's not the longest film, but those kind of films come later. Uh, and at the, end, the end of the film, uh, kind of again, uh, United Artists, who um, kind of distributed the film, uh, wanted a kind of a happier ending, which Kubrick was not very happy with. But they agreed to kind of finance the film a lot and also fi uh, help finance his uh, his uh, next film, uh, The Killing. And uh, like I say, it's not too much to say about the film. It's a good. I say it could have been doing a bit, a bit longer. It's one of those films where kind of like nothing happens in the first like thirty five minutes, and then like everything happens uh, kind of. Um, very quickly. I mean, it moves. It moves at a, 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 at a brisk pace, and it's, uh, the, the scenes kind of um, unfold to, in each other very well. You know, the film flows very well. You know, there's a couple of fight scenes here that are really of note. There's this scene where um, he kind of finds out where the kind of the guy kind of ca captures his girl and um, uh, ties her up in this warehouse, and he goes to kind of save her. And then uh, it, this, this this fight scene just comes out of nowhere, and it's really well shot. It's like each each like punch is like what is like uh, an edit. It's like re it's really kind of it, it just directs fight scenes with like such tenacity, you know. You know, and there's like I, I wouldn't be surprised if kind of uh, if Raging Bull wasn't kind of that that filming filming of the fight scene wasn't um, uh, somewhat based on the way that Kubrick shot this film. And there's also a uh, an amazing uh, fight right at the end of the film at a, um, uh, at, a ma at a mannequin warehouse that really has to be seen to be believed. It's absolutely incredible. Like I say, Kubrick is the master. It's just everything he does is just absolutely incredible. This one less so. I mean, like I say, it's, it's pay it had pacing issues. The acting, some of the acting wasn't fantastic, but like I say, it's a solid kind of time capsule film again, like Fear and Desire. 
and I enjoyed it for what it was. Like I say, it could have been a bit longer, but uh, yeah, so that killer's kiss. So that will do for this part. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I'm really enjoying doing it. And I'll see you next time in part five of 2014, A Kubrick Odyssey.